I'm going to talk in this video about different types of storage media, focusing on four different types, uh, which are paper, optical, magnetic, and solid state. For each, I'm going to evaluate them because that's really how they tend to get asked about in exam situations. What are the pros, what are the cons? So just on what storage means, storage is just a way to keep information long-term. You wanna keep it to use later on, you want to add to it later on, whatever you're doing, you're keeping it not just for a short while, but for a, a long time. It should be able to last for years um, if you need it to. And just on that word media and medium, because they're two words we don't use very often in normal English, at least in this way. So when you hear the phrase storage medium, that refers to one method. So medium is singular for a way to store something. Whereas storage media is the plural version. So storage media refers to multiple methods. So if I say this storage medium, I mean one thing, storage media refers to several things. So please don't get confused if you hear those two words. That's just what they mean. One's plural, one is not. So the most simple way, the most old fashioned way, I suppose, which of course we still use a lot, is storing information on paper. So loads of examples, things like notes, things like maps, things like flashcards, are all ways to put information down on paper. And something which you might not think about when you do IT, but still worth considering the pros and cons of putting stuff down on paper. Because of course you can print stuff and leave it as paper in a filing cabinet, say. Well, the main pro is no need for any electricity or internet. You can take it anywhere. You're not gonna be hampered by poor connection or expensive energy costs and so on. Another key advantage is if you have got confidential information, you can lock it away, put it in a safe, for example. If it's on a computer, it could be hacked, it could be lost accidentally or deliberately, but when it's locked away in person, it's maybe easier to control. But it can be hard to make backups. You could scan it, but you know, I don't know how cost effective that is if you're storing lots of, lots of data. Whereas a computer file can be backed up quite easily. They are also quite hard to convert, especially if you're writing stuff down, it's handwriting, and also to reuse. And finally, paper takes up a surprising amount of space. If you think how much data your computer can store, putting it on paper, printing all of it out, would take up a lot of physical space. But thankfully, electronic methods came along and it can make things a lot more compact. The first type of storage, which is electronic, is optical storage. So optical storage includes things like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray. So the discs, which are shiny, things which I grew up with, you, I'm sure, maybe come across, especially if you do gaming, but are sort of being used less and less nowadays. And just on the difference between these terms, CD, DVD, Blu-ray, as time progressed, they could store more and more things. So CDs, roughly about 700 megabytes, go out to Blu-rays, which can be, say, roughly 25 gigabytes. Those numbers are just rough guides. We are talking about gigabytes, even in the best case for Blu-ray. So not huge capacity compared to something like a hard drive. Just bear that in mind. Now, the way they work, just as a rough description, is, as the word optical might suggest, they use different reflections of light to read data, and in the case of writing data, they use a laser to do this. So the way this works is, on the disk surface, some bits are flat and some bits have got a little bump or a little pit is the phrase. So a flat bit, the laser will shine down and it'll bounce straight up. So that reflection might be a binary one, for example. Whereas if we had a little bump, a little pit, the laser might shine down and it might reflect in a slightly weird manner. That might be read as a binary zero. And so you can, using lots and lots and lots of flat bits and bumpy bits, you can represent files in binary. And the extra information is held on the disk, like I say, in these flat and bumpy bits. But to be able to actually read it, you need to have that laser, you need to have a disk drive. So not many computers have these anymore. Laptops used to always have these, and now they don't ever, really. Um, you have to put the disk in, and it will have the little laser inside it, which can read and write the data. That's called a disk drive. And that does feed into our evaluation, actually. We're starting with pros. So they are generally reliable. They won't just suddenly break mid-use. If something is reliable, it means it can continue again and again without any issues or errors, typically speaking. They are quite portable. They're really thin, of course. 
so easy to pack and carry. But like I sort of suggested, they have quite a small capacity compared to alternatives. And they are slower, generally speaking. Blu-ray is quite quick, but compared to the latest technology, they have got slower read and write times. And you have to have a disk drive to use it. Not many devices have any more. Although you can buy external ones which can plug in through USB. Magnetic storage is another storage media type. And there are a few examples in use, the most common being hard disk drives, just hard drives for short, which shorten to HDDs, even shorter. So here's a picture of an internal hard drive. You might also have external ones which plug in, and but also cassettes you may well have used. I'm only just old enough to have used these when I was a child. But also swipe cards, things you might have in a hotel to get into your room, use magnetic storage. And the way these work is, just roughly speaking, data is written to the disk or the swipe card or the cassette by changing magnetism on the disk or tape's surface. And to read the data, you can detect the different levels of magnetism on the surface. So in a hard drive, this is a hard drive with its case taken off. You've got usually one or more spinning disks, which spin really fast and a read write head will go over the disk radius and be able to either detect or change magnetism on the disk to store and read information from it. So disk is spinning really, really fast, usually around 7,000 times a minute. And as you might know, they produce quite a lot of heat and sound, which leads into our evaluation. So benefits are they've been around for a while and are very easily available. They're quite cheap actually, and you can get very large capacities. So you can get up to say eight terabytes nowadays about too much cost. And they are generally quite reliable, although failures do occur. It's not unknown for after a few years for hard drives just to suddenly break and you lose your data and there's not much you can do. And in terms of cons, they're not very durable. Durability is about how easily things can break. CDs are not durable. I didn't mention that, but they're not very durable. Neither are magnetic hard disks because the disks can break really easily. If you say drop a hard disk, it's gonna break and that means it's not gonna work. And they also, they're not slow, but they are slower when compared to the latest technology, which are SSDs. So an SSD is short for solid state drive. Solid state storage has no moving parts. Unlike a hard disk or an optical disk, which spin really fast, these do not move internally at all. Instead, electronic circuits are used to store the data in binary without any need for anything to move. So really we've got billions of switches which are either on or off to represent the binary. And examples of solid state storage are things like SSDs, like I mentioned, but also other flash memory devices. Flash memory is just a particular way to make these circuits. Not all SSDs are flash memory, but lots are. So flash memory devices are things like USB memory sticks. That's an SSD, by the way. USB memory sticks, which is what that is. And also just other memory cards, things like SD cards. An SD card might go into a camera. Now, just on USB memory sticks, please call them that or call them flash sticks or something like that. Don't just call them USB. That's a really common mistake. They're USB sticks or USB memory sticks. So solid state storage as an evaluation, generally reliable, can be very durable because nothing's moving. If you drop it, it's not gonna break. Your phone has got a solid state memory chip. If you drop your phone, it's not the memory that's gonna break, it's gonna be the screen or the CPU or something like that. The SSD is quite durable. They are portable because they can be made so small and they are generally fast. So generally fast read and write times, but they are expensive still. So high cost per gigabyte you're buying. And occasionally they've got a limited number of writes. You can only write say a hundred thousand times before it stops working, which means longer term there might be some reliability problems. Now, as these have got more advanced and more developed, this is less of an issue. This still can affect certain devices like SSDs.